Hey, what's up guys? If you clicked that link today, you're wanting to know about another awesome local small business here in Wilco Park, the Colorado Gear Lab. So make sure you stay tuned to the end. You'll get everything you could possibly imagine about the Colorado Gear Lab. Hey guys, really quick for you in that video, it's my name is James D with James D my real estate team. And I just wanted to make sure if you haven't done this already, make sure you hit that subscription button down below the notification bell. What that does is keeps you notified. Every time we come up with a new video, we do at least two a week. And I just want to keep you updated and just cool things to do, cool things to see out here within the Woodland Park and Teller County area. And you get to see a little bit of how I like live my life out here as well. If you've got any questions or comments, please don't hesitate. Give me a call, shoot me a text at 719-266-2725. You can also email me at info at jdmret.net. Net, and I will get back to you as fast as I can to answer any of those questions or comments. And if you've got any real estate needs out here whatsoever, please, once again, don't hesitate. Give me a call or, or you know, shoot me that email or that text. This is James D with James D. My real estate team, the team leader here. And I absolutely love living here and I love helping people out here in this area too. Hope you guys like this video. All right, guys, we're here at Colorado Gear Lab with Lynn, the owner of Colorado Gear Lab. And we're just going to talk a little bit about what Colorado Gear Lab has to offer. I mean, it's a unique store, I think, within the Woodland Park area. So what are you guys all about? What's How did you guys start, I guess, is a good question, and we can kind of go from there. Sure. Um, well, I'm Lynn. I'm the owner and co-founder with my husband, George Jones, of uh, the store. We moved here, um, gosh, almost six years ago from Michigan, and we moved to Woodland Park. There was no outdoor store. So we decided we would take that upon ourselves and open Colorado Gear Lab. And we have always loved the new and used model. Yeah. So we started, um, we had more used at the time, so it's a consignment model. Um, and then we bring in the new retail to sort of round things out. But it's all outdoor gear and apparel. It's all outdoor based. Yeah, and you guys moved here shortly after my wife and I did. Because I remember when we moved here, we live in Divide. And uh, we were just shocked that there wasn't anywhere really. I mean, you'd have to go all the way down to the Colorado Springs area to find anything really. Exactly. So it's nice that you really filled that hole within the community as well. And you guys have grown tremendously. I mean, you've, you're already on your second building we are. <laughs> since, <laughs> since, since you've been here because you continue to grow. And it, and it really grew out of that. I mean, it's you're still in the consignment model, but it grew from that with all of the new go uh, goods you have here too. So you really can kind of fit anybody's need. Yeah, absolutely. And um, some of the best advice we were given by another local business owner was to make sure that we pay attention to what our locals want and need. Um, we know the tourists will come and we love having them here all year, um, but we really need our locals to come back. And so that means having inventory that they want, that they need. Um, if we can save them a trip down the pass, then we are happy to do that. So. Yeah, and that's, that's been a big, really kind of a, a evolution that's kind of happened within Wilbur Park, I think, in the last 10 years. Sure. We've really driven a lot of locals back to shopping here within this town, which has been incredible. And you guys are definitely a cornerstone of that as well as, as that's all happened. So you guys have seasonal stuff too, right? So you have some summer inventory and then getting into winter and some in between maybe as well. Right. And I, I feel like we're in that where summer meets winter um, <laughs> kind of situation, because if you look at one part of the store, you're going to see clearance items of shorts and then I've got several pairs of snowshoes that have just arrived um, so we're always changing things up a bit based on the seasonality there are things that we will always have no matter what the season we carry almost any kind of jacket that comes in on consignment all year long um, because people get cold in June and they get cold in February so and we have um, snow in June sometimes we so. do. And, <laughs> yes and so um, there is a seasonality to it um, we do bring out our snowshoe rentals we have a rental fleet that we'll put on display here um, pretty soon and we rent snowshoes through our website you rent them on the website you pick them yeah. up here at the store that's great too I didn't know that I didn't know you guys did rentals with that types of thing so that's so there are places down in the springs, I know that when we were looking at getting my snowshoes, because my wife's always been trying to get me into it, and you couldn't find any rentals anywhere, so that's that's pretty cool that you guys have that here also. Yeah. So 
All we need is a lot of snow. <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully this year we're going to yes. get it with all the rain and moisture we've had. Yeah, we're hopeful. So do you guys also, the, so the jackets is really important. Uh, I mean, it's literally, that's not really just a seasonal thing in Colorado. You always need to have a jacket in Colorado. Yeah. So having those is definitely key. But in the summertime too, do you guys do certain uh, particular things in the summertime as far as inventory? That sure, we'll load up more um, on shorts and um, it's more of the, the sun shirts and sun gloves, you know, the protective kind of wear. Yeah. Um, that people need. We load up on our Camelback reservoirs and uh, jet boil fuel oh, yeah. and the camping food. Although the camping food we have to keep stocked well into the fall, especially for our hunters. Yes. Because it sells well then too. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. And we're in hunting season right yeah. now. So. Yeah. Then we switch up the footwear a bit on the retail side. We have a lot more sandals yep. in the summertime. Keen and Chaco is what we have been carrying. Those are um, great brands too. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, and you guys also have, uh, I saw spikes for walking around on ice as well. Um, right. So what are some of the other stuff that you guys have specific to winter? Yeah, and so the spikes, um, we kind of recommend that people have them in their packs from fall all the way through May or June. <laughs> and especially if they're doing 14ers, even yeah. in the summertime, um, those will pick up some snow and ice. And so we'll keep those, um, we love the Catula brand, we'll... We have three different levels. Um, we have the nano spikes, the exo spikes, and the micro spikes, depending on what your conditions are. Yeah. So yeah, so we'll definitely keep those up. Um, sunglasses uh, is a huge seller for us. Um, we sell tons of sunglasses. So we're always well stocked in the summertime as well as sun hats. Yeah. Um, the sun is very strong here, and I think a lot of people who come and visit don't quite realize that we may not get um, consistent 80 plus degree temperatures, but we do get consistent sunshine. Absolutely. And so yeah. they need that protection. So we sell tons of hats and yeah. sunscreen. <laughs> yeah. And being closer to the sun, they're more yeah. likely to get burned up here than they would at the beach a lot of times. Absolutely. So, yeah. Um, so in the, with the spikes, those are really important too. I mean, I know I've been on, I can't tell you how many trails I've been on. Mm -hmm. And, and if you guys watch the channel, you've seen Pancake Rocks. Pancake Rocks is one of them where I've gone in the springtime thinking that all of the snow is gone. And you get up to the top, and if we didn't have spikes, we weren't doing it because we weren't going to slide down Absolutely. rocks or do anything along those lines. So it's not fun to get up there and realize you're missing something that's pretty right. crucial. Just throw, right. Just throw them in your pack. Just throw them in your pack. It's so you small never light. Know. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So um, you guys are always constantly growing, also, and I know we're not going to go into specifics on it. But there's definitely some really neat things in the workup as well, um, and uh, so you guys are going to enjoy that. But uh, just kind of keep your eye open, uh, and hopefully we'll see it open here soon. Um, but it'll definitely be a big benefit to the community, also. Absolutely. So yeah, it, it's been a really fun story, and um, we started where 110 Reserve is now. <laughs> um, we started in that small space, and again, we had mostly consignment, and then kept bringing in the retail, and then. We knew at some point that either our customers or our inventory would tell us it is time to move. And both of those things happened at the end of 2020. So we moved into this building. And um, now we're using both floors, which yeah. is great. The upstairs is not completely packed. Um, we like to have open space. We have people who come in and will sit down at those tables and they'll just stare at the peak and enjoy their coffee and that's totally fine. Yeah. Um, we also use the upstairs for events like Art Walk. We oh, enjoy wow. having artists and musicians up there. We even have a couple of artists who display their artwork on the wall up there and yeah. we'll sell it for them so that's great. Um, the high school mountain bike team likes to use our upstairs, especially on rainy days when they're supposed to have a practice and it gives them a place to be. Um, there's an organization, Revenant Running, that um, puts together the ultra races and we have become a packet pickup location. That's so great. Yeah, yeah, so we've enjoyed having some space up there, a little bit of elbow room. Yeah. Um, and then we can display also some of our used things, our chairs, our tents. We love to put tents up. Um, the used ones so that people can take a good look and um, yeah. before they make a purchase. Yeah. So you guys have consignment here also. So what's the process behind the consignment uh, value that you guys add not only to the people buying it but to the people selling it? Sure, well? absolutely. So we've had um, a consignment model ever since we opened and now we have well over 500 consigners many of whom are repeat consigners. Wow, yeah. So people bring their items in, we research them, we price them, when the items sell is when we pay our consigners. So we don't buy anything outright mm -hmm. that's used. 
um, but it's a 50-50 split. If you decide to use your payout in the store, it's actually a 60 uh, split, 60-40 split for you. It's yeah. worth 10% more, but you can bring in your used stuff and you can buy new items um, here as yeah. well. So it works out very well for our consigners. Some love just to take the payouts and many times people like to have their um, their balance filled so they can get that tent or that special pack or something that you know, they've had their eye on for yeah. a while. That's an excellent program too because so many times when something gets worn out or you're just moving on from whatever hobby that was or right. what you're doing and it just sits there. So it's a great way to help kind of keep things moving. It helps folks out that maybe not necessarily want something brand new as sure. well and get you a little bit of change in your pocket yeah, also. Yeah, absolutely. So. And, and I look back on, um, you know, since the beginning, we opened February of 2018 yeah. when we first opened our doors and just the relationships that have developed with people in the community, um, whether they're consigners or shoppers, but the consignment has just been such, um, it's just been such a wonderful part of our business model and yeah. it has really helped us to connect more with the community and understand what our community's needs are. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and you guys have a great location too. It's right here off the main stretch on 24. So real close to everything else. You can park here and see several shops, but you guys are, it's easy to spot. I mean, Colorado Gear Lab is right up on the side of the right. two-story building, yeah. and it's right here in the heart of Little Park. So. Yeah, absolutely. So we're at 108 West Midland Avenue. Yeah. Parking is in the back. For a lot of people <laughs> who aren't sure where to park, most of these buildings have parking in the back. Yeah. We also have a website, it's called coloradogearlab.com, and you can go on, um, almost all of our new, our retail items are on the website. We get the consignment items up as quickly as possible, but I would say that the consignment items are more of a sampling mm -hmm. of what's on our website, and so what we tend to see is people will check out our website to see the types of things that we have, yeah. and then that will draw them in to check out the rest of it. So it works out very well. Perfect. Yeah. I would just, uh, just on behalf of my husband and I, would just um, like to thank you oh. um, for oh. coming and just spending some time and highlighting our business. I can't tell you how much we appreciate that. We also just have such a tremendous appreciation for our community, the residents of Woodland Park, of Tyler County, all the surrounding communities, and we just can't thank you enough for the support that you have continued to show us and um, you have just made this such a fun, fun um, and rewarding experience. So thank you so much. Yeah, and on behalf of the community, thank you guys for being here. And it's, we love our small community. I mean, it's a, it's a family. It's Absolutely. definitely a family, so, yeah. all right. I really hope you guys enjoyed that video. Don't forget, if you've got any questions, comments, whatever you've got, please send them to me. You can call or text me at 719-266-2725. You can also email me at jdmret.net, or excuse me, at info at jdmret.net. I would love to be your local real estate agent. I'd love to be your local expert. So if anything, it doesn't have to be real estate related, please don't hesitate to ask. Let me know what those questions are, and I will get them right back to you. I look forward to seeing you guys next time.